can't worship those things, you know? You can't make that your first love, put your all into chasing riches, you know? Stack up your riches and your treasure in the heavens, you know? A spiritual bank with the Lord, you know? Because the things of this world is vain, and it tells you that. It says, for all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh. So should you be taking a jab? The jab that everybody's going to go take? No, because that's something of the world. You should have faith in the Lord, you know? It says, the lust of the flesh and people are going out there taking the job because of the lust of their flesh either either they want to travel even either, either they want to fly either they want to be around a whole bunch of people either it's out of fear they're scared that they're going to get you know the thing that's going around and get severely sick from they lack faith you know it's because of the lust of this flesh it says in the lust of this flesh and the pride of life it's because of the pride of life they want to have pride in life they want to be able to go around America and enjoy themselves without worrying about getting sick or getting whatever is out here. Look, you can't escape the Lord's judgment. If it's your time to go, it's your time to go. Why would you even try to escape the Lord's judgment? But it's because the pride of life. They want to live. That's why we read in Matthew chapter 10, those that should try to save their lives should lose their lives. And those that, sh that are willing to lose their lives for the Lord shall find life. Very important. And remember Lot's wife. Lot's wife that's a very important thing. Always remember Lot's wife, especially for the woman too. What did Lot's wife do? She looked back. She looked back into the world because of the pride of life and that lust of the flesh. You know, here it is. The Lord finna destroy the whole place. Sodom and Gomorrah rain, fire, and brimstone down. And the Lord elected them to be saved, sent the angels down to lead them out. And she still looked back, man. You know, she probably had friends in Sodom and Gomorrah that was about to be destroyed things her favorite place to eat her favorite place to drink worldly lust of the flesh right and and she looked back and she was turned to a pillar of salt you know but the angel told her do not look back but she looked back because of the pride of life and she was put to death where she was elected at first to be saved but everything is by the way of the lord but then she got put to death because she looked back so remember lot's wife you know now, um, finishing up in here, it says, um, the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. The world passes away in the lust thereof. And what do people lust over? Well, we're talking about the subject today of this camp. People lust over money, riches, treasure, you know? And it says, the, um, the world passes away in the lust thereof. So you gotta understand that this world gonna pass away. So all those things are vain because this world's gonna pass away. The money, the dollar, the American dollar, the Chinese, whatever, the Mexican peso, all that fake money, currency, all that stuff is going to pass away. Those things aren't going to exist in the kingdom. You know, America is not going to exist when the kingdom is established. America is going to be destroyed just like Egypt was destroyed. But just like... Um, Assyrians was um, destroyed just like Babylon was destroyed just like Babel was destroyed just like the Persian and Medes was destroyed just like the Greeks were destroyed just like the Romans were destroyed America is really just Rome all over again it's just Rome all over again it's making you worship the ancient Roman pagan empire because the people that was in rulership in Rome are the same people that's in rulership in America so this place is going to be destroyed. So why would you put out your all, your love, your faith into something like the treasures or money or the American dollar or something of this world when you know that that stuff is going to pass away? This is, um, to keep going, it says, but he that does the will of God abide forever, which is the same as stacking up that spiritual treasure in heaven. You know, you're doing the will of the Lord. You know, you're doing, you following the law, statutes, and commandments, you know? of the Lord. You're bearing up your cross and you're following the Lord, you know? Um, let me see what else I had on the topic. F Philippines 2 and James 1. Philippians here, let me see if I can find it. This is Philippians chapter 2 like that you know Philippians 2 um, straight to the point verse 12 it says 
wherefore my beloved as ye have always obeyed not in um my presence only but now much more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling every man every woman have to work out their own salvation nobody can get you salvation from the lord you can't purchase salvation from the lord you got to do the works yourself and the works is keeping the law statutes and commandments of the lord you know you have to work out your own salvation you got to have faith but you got to have works with faith that's going to james too but knowing that every man must work out their own salvation it's not that i could hold a brother's hand i could help a brother out here and there teach him things but the, the spirit got to be on that brother to put up the videos the spirit got to be on that brother to go out and do camp what if i don't what if emergency happened or something and i can't show up the camp would you still go out camp go, go out to camp yourself you got to work out your own salvation you know it's only so much i could do for another brother when i'm still trying to work out my salvation because we don't even know we're going to be saved so that's why we're doing the work to stack up that spiritual bank to, to stack up our treasures in heaven but you got to do it yourself you know brother this brother might stack up more treasures in heaven than you but you ain't supposed to look at it that way you got to worry about yourself and you got to worry about you doing the work so you could be saved i'm gonna read that one again because that's a beautiful precept it says wherefore my beloved as i as ye have always obeyed not as in um as in my presence only but now much more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is god which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure do all things without memory and disputing that ye may be blameless and harmless the son of god without rebuke in the midst of a crook and a perverse nation among who ye shine um as lights in the world right and then if you go back to matthew chapter 10 right if you go back to matthew chapter 10 it says the same thing precept to go with that i could jump to it um precept to go with that is matthew chapter 10 um verse 16 behold i send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless harmless as doves so we're commanded to be har harmless as doves man wise as serpents because it ain't time for us to fight it ain't time for us to war this is a spiritual war so we went on the spiritual level the lord is going to come back and do the um and take the vengeance for us you know when two opposite sides go to war whoever has the best technology is going to win it's always been that way you know the so-called europeans british spaniards were able to take down the native americans because they had the better technology they had the weapon they had the gun which the lord gave them that blessing to fulfill prophecy but when the lord comes back they got fighter jets they got different spacecrafts that they take into the sky but the lord got the better technology the lord got something that the world calls ufos which is the chariots of israel which is better technology than they got so the lord is going to come back and destroy them you can read about that in revelation chapter 12 second address chapter 13 breaks down the war in the heaven between man the armies of the earth you know and their fighter jets their gen 5 gen 6 jets versus the chariots of the lord the angels and it tells you they're going they're going to be cat they're going to be destroyed you know utterly destroyed if you jump to romans chapter 2 this is romans 2 which is very important let me see where it's at right here um verse 28 for he is not a jew which is one outwardly neither is that circumcision which is um outward in the flesh right because you got to not be just a jew outwardly not just an israelite you got to be an israelite by blood in order to be elected I meaning you have to come from the seed of abraham isaac and jacob but it says but he is a jew which is one inwardly you got to be a jew inwardly too meaning you got to follow the lord like the jews are supposed to keep the law statutes and commandments of the lord and the circumcision of that of the heart and the spirit and not of the latter whose praise is not of man but of god so you're not really fleshy you're not carnal you know you're not worried about carnal things that pass away like money gold silver and all those things wealth of this world you more worried about the inwardly the spirit you know the faith this is um romans 3 verse 1 to keep it going 
It says, what advantage then has the Jew? Or what profit is there of the circumcision? It says, much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. So unto us who are the Israelites are committed the oracles of God. We know the truth of this Bible. That's why you have a young man like me. I could attain to wise counsel and then I could come down here and remember all these precepts off the top of my head and break down this Bible. You know, a young man like me could come down and break down this Bible. We could go all throughout the whole book because I didn't ate the whole row. We could go all through Revelation chapter 10, Revelations, the whole Revelation book, and I could break it down to you. Because unto us was committed the oracles of God. You know, Revelation 10 tells you to um, pretty much eat the whole row and sweet in your mouth, but, bi but bitter in your uh, belly. You know, eat the whole book. Ezekiel chapter 3 tells you eat the whole row. You know, this is... um. Going more in, Rev in Romans chapter 3, verse 3 says, What if some did not believe? Should their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? So if you don't believe that the things that we're saying are going to come true, that America is going to be destroyed, then should that make the um, the faith of God without um, effect? God forbid. Yeah, let God be true, but every man a liar as it is written. So that's the reason why we're coming out the Bible as it is written. And then, you know, I'll break it down to you so you can better understand it. And then I get another precept and then I get another precept and I might get five precepts. I might get 10 precepts just to prove to you what I'm saying is true. This whole camp has been, you know, bringing out precepts, you know, it says, um, for God forbid, yeah, let God be true and every man a liar as it is written. So you have to come off the Bible as it's written, not off, off your own heart or what you believe or what you feel. You got to be able to come to the Bible and prove. You have to study to show yourself approved. It says that, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome if when thou art judged. So we got to come do the works, you know, by this word so we can overcome if when that judgment comes. You know, you stacking up in that spiritual bank so you can be saved, you know. Let's jump to, this might be the last one. Um, the book of James. James chapter 1 verse 10 no verse 11 let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is allotted it says but the rich since we're talking about riches and treasure right it says but the rich in that he is made low right because as a flower of grass he should pass away right and it's going to tell you why for the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat but is with but with, which is withered the, the grass, right? And the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perish. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. So it's just like when the sun comes up, the biggest flower, the richest flower, always passes away because the heat comes and scorches scorch the grass. It withers the grass, and that flower, since it's sitting so higher than the rest, it withers away. So it's just like during this time, the rich, you know, they gonna feel it the worst because they're used to being, to living on that high pedestal. They're used to the riches. They used to a certain lifestyle, a certain standard of life. So when all hell breaks loose, shit hits the fan and all those things is, and it's just insurrection of all hell purging the streets on the earth, they gonna feel it the worst. A lot of them gonna commit suicide because they're not gonna be used to famines. They're not gonna be used to not having things because they're so used to having those things. So when the earth is, when the Lord is coming back to destroy America in a second death fire brimstone, which is going to come by nuclear weapons, it's just like the heat of the sun coming or that insurrection or that persecution coming, right? Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah chapter 30 coming, it's going to make the, the highest flowers are going to perish, you know? Just like I, um, today before camp, um, there's a famous rapper, girl rapper named Nicki Minaj, and I was reading, you know, I was listening to a video of how she was talking about the jab. And she was saying, look, nine times out of 10, she's probably going to get the jab. She's holding out right now. She hasn't got it. But she admitted, she said nine times out of 10, she's going to get it because she has the tour. So because she has to go make money and has to tour and see her fans and live that rich lifestyle and be famous, she's trying to save her life that she has, right? And they got to keep doing it. Even at old age, they got to keep going, keep going, keep going, you know? So because of that, she's going to go out there and get that jab. So what you think is going to happen when the mark of the beast come, which is the microchip? In order to save her life, in order to tour, she's going to go get it. She was saying, look, um, they just had the Met Gala where all the where all the entertainers, you know, they wear their best 
custom design outfits and you know there's a theme and you had Rihanna you know you had um, a lot of fame Kim Kardashian you know all the famous A-listers that go to the Met Gala and they were saying in order to go to the Met Gala they was requiring that everybody had to get the jab so everybody that was there you know that they already got the jab so they would rather follow this man and follow those, this world and go get the jab rather than follow the Lord and miss out on those things if, they, if it's going to cause them to miss out on those things, then they're going to go with the program. So they're going to get the jab. They're going to get the mark of the beast, man. So you can't follow these people, you know? And it goes into the lesson of this um, camp, you know? Stack up your riches and your treasures in heaven. Those things that they're chasing are vain. Nobody's going to remember what, what Kim Kardashian, what Rihanna, where the Matt Gala in the kingdom. They're going to be destroying them. We're going to live it up in the kingdom, you know? Now to keep going verse 12 it says blessed is the man that endureth temptation it says for when he is tried he should receive the crown of life which is the which the lord has promised to them that love him that crown of life man that's why we put up this work in order to get that crown of life to be a part of the elect you could read about that in revelation chapter 7 you know it says let no man say when he is tempted i am tempted of god don't say that you know the Lord is making you do this. You got to take responsibility and accountability, even though everything is done by the way of the Lord, right? It says, when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed, these things, money, riches, gold, silver, you know, all the things of this world could kind of draw you away from this truth. And you can't let it, man. You can't let it draw you away from the truth. You got to fight. You know, I believe it was the Apostle Paul, if I'm correct, that said he had put up a great fight. You know, you got to put up a great fight in this truth. You got to keep this faith to the end, man. It says, um, now, here, um, it says, um, but every man, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. Then eventually you go off, you stop doing the work, and then you start to sin, you know? You know because of the lust you know you might get in some of these you might get a lot of money you might become a entertainer you might become um um what they what they call them not an entertainer but um a celebrity right and then you might get in some of these parties and it might cause you to sin because in these parties they might be in part or in these parties they might want you to do some abominable things in order to get farther you know which could cause you to sin you know it says it said, then when the lust has conceived and bringing forth sin, the sin, when it is finished, bringing forth death. You know, a sin bring forth death. You're going to be destroyed. If you ain't destroyed when all hell break loose, then you're going to be destroyed when the missiles come. It says, do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. So that's what we're thinking about, spiritual things. The heavens above the Lord, right? That's what we're stacking up for, that spiritual bank. It says... Uh, coming down from the father of lights it says with who is no very variableness neither shadow of turning of his own will begot he us with the word of truth that we shall be the kind of the first fruits of his creation so that's the goal is to go to the kingdom be those first fruits right because then in the kingdom we're going to live it up and i'm going to get one precept on that and end it off right here to show you in the kingdom we're going to have all the riches man so that's what we thinking forward to. Not the riches of this world. All this shit going to be destroyed, man. There ain't going to be Lamborghinis in the kingdom. Lamborghinis are going to be destroyed. <laughs> but this is Isaiah chapter 60, verse 11. It says, Therefore thy gates shall be open continuously, right? They shall not be shut day nor night, that man may bring into us the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. We're going to get all the riches in you anyways, right? It says, for the nation and kingdom that will not serve me shall perish. Yeah, those nations shall utterly be wasted, which is slavery, meaning they're going to be forced to serve us, right? It says, those nations shall utterly be wasted. First, jump to verse 14. The sons also of them that have afflicted thee, the ones that took all the riches from us, right? It says, shall come bending a knee, bending into thee, and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. And they should call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion, the, whole, um, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. So they took our heritage, they took our riches, they took our land, but they're going to give it all back to us, right? 
we gonna get it all back in the kingdom. They gonna admit who the Israelites is. I'm sorry, spirit is on me. I gotta keep going. A couple more, a couple more. The spirit hit me, so I gotta keep going. This is Zechariah 14. We ended off with Revelation 3. Zechariah 14, verse 13 says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the great atonement for the Lord shall be among them. And they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor. And on his hand shall raise up against the hand of his neighbor. And Judah also shall fire Jerusalem and the wealth of all the heathen round about. Let me let this chart go. I need you to feel this. I need, I need you to hear this. And I need you to feel this. It says, um, And Judah also shall fire Jerusalem and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together. Gold and silver and the pure and great abundance. Meaning that we gonna get the wealth just like in ancient times this has always happened whenever we went back to the land or whenever we follow our Lord. The same thing will happen now. We're going to get the riches. It says, look, all together, you know, all the wealth of all the heathen round about should be gathered together. Gold and silver and the pure and great abundance. Anything of abundance, anything of wealth is going to be given to the Israelites. So why would you, why do you need to stack up those things on this side? You should be looking towards the kingdom because we're going to have it all. Anyways, the difference with the kingdom is it's going to be everlasting. Like it says, you know, those, the, the spiritual treasures in heaven, man can't, can't um, corrupt, man can't touch. You know, moth can't corrupt it. You know, no man can touch it. But the ones of this world, man can, you know. End it off right here. Spirit, so tie the spirit jump on you. A couple more precepts coming ahead. You got to keep going, man. This is Revelations. Um... Chapter 3, verse 9. Behold, I will make them the synagogue of Satan. We we'll say they are Jews. We know who's saying they're Jews. The only people in the world that's saying as a nation they are Jews are the people in the land. So it says it's calling them the synagogue of Satan. You know, we we'll say they are Jews. The people, if you go type Jews in on Google, the people that, that um, pops up, this is who this is talking about. It says, Behold, I will make them the synagogue of Satan. Which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie because they're lying. Behold, the so-called Negroes come from the tribe of Judah. Those are the true Jews. You looking at a true Jew. I will be a true Jew. The real Jews, right? But, you know, the 12 tribes. You got the Native Americans and Hispanics, right? It says, um, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come to come and worship before thy feet and we just read about that in isaiah chapter 60 which means they're going to have to worship us and they're going to have to serve us if not then they're going to be destroyed that's called slavery it says i will come and make them it says i will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that i had loved thee so the lord going to make them come worship at feet and know that he loved us going back to revelation chapter 2 verse 9 it says i know thy works and thy tribulation and poverty so we're in poverty right now on this side because we gave up those things, right? It says, but thou art rich. But we do have riches with the Lord. We have riches stacked up in the heavens. That's why I say, but we are rich. Why? Because we have the promise of the kingdom that's going to come with abundance of wealth and riches. You know, so stack up and put your mindset and your heart towards those things, you know? It says, and I know the blasphemy of them will stay there are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So with that, you know, Stack up that spiritual bank in heaven. Do the work so you're just stacking up that spiritual money and that spiritual treasure in heaven with the Lord. Don't worry about the things of this side, the things of this corner world that are vain, because those things are going to perish. So with that, I'm going to say salvation to the elect, Shalom. I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Double honors to the apostles and the elders. Peace, blessings, honors to all the brothers in the truth.